What's up guys? Mike here from Ecom Knives. Hey, you remember when I used to actually come in here and make stuff? And I wasn't doing stupid vlog videos? I mean, the vlogs have their place, of course, but at the end of the day, this is the heart of it all, right here in the shop making stuff. So, I'm going to show you what I've been up to lately. I tell you, fellas, it is weird being behind the camera like this. I haven't done one of these in a long time. So, we're just going to go through some of the stuff that I've been working on. Uh, some of the stuff you've seen already, of course. Uh, eventually, it's all going to go up for sale. This is the agitator friction folder, as you can see. The only bolster model I ever made. Carbon fiber, titanium. As you can see, two-tone satin finish on the grinds with the acid stone wash flats. Got a little bit of uh, oil and stuff on it, but... That'll clean right up. Of course, sculpted titanium clip and polished titanium backspacer. Of course, we gotta check the centering on that. There we go. Just the way I like it, nice and centered. Okay, now that was kind of an old one. That's been done for a while and just kicking around the shop. Uh, for some reason, I haven't put it up for sale, probably because of my laziness. But we're just going to continue on and show you what else I've been making. For some reason, I get it in my head that I need to make a giant collection of knives before I sell them lately. This is my Woods Walker model. This one has the forward finger toil. A satin finish. I'm, I'm sorry, not a satin finish. A flat grind with a blasted finish. This one still needs a logo and stuff. It's got the jimping cut into the handles and everything. And it's got that nice hourglass handle shape. Which I really love the way that looks. It's actually surprisingly comfortable. I thought this was going to be a major hot spot right here. Uh, but for my hand, this feels pretty good. And I know if you're seeing that big black mark on my thumb, uh, use a push stick when you use a bandsaw. <laughs> Ask me how I found that out. <laughs> Alright, uh, moving right along. I guess we'll just go down the row. This one is a Patriot model with one of them real shiny grinds. As you can see, that is my super, super high gloss grind, and this is probably one of the best that I've ever done. I really took my time on it. Of course, see, there you are. There I am, standing behind the tripod. Super, super shiny. This one has the satin flats and a 220 grit swedge. The swedge is ground nice and thin. And these are all about an eighth of an inch stock. And this was, this handle was uh, all free-handed too, by the way. I just kind of grabbed it and said, yeah, let's see, let's see how this looks. And I think it came out pretty nice. So that is uh, my Patriot model with, I guess this is kind of turning into a, a signature move for me. I don't want to steal it from uh, Tony Marfioni, who, who absolutely blows me out of the water with mirror polishing, but I really liked it how this looks and uh, I almost feel bad stuffing it in a Kydex sheath so I was thinking about doing leather sheaths but I gotta buy some tooling and learn a whole new process. I have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to leather. Okay this is another Woods Walker model. This one does not have the forward finger toil. Some people don't like that. This one does have a logo. This is satin grind and the logo as you can see in the right light is ghosted into the grind so when you look at it straight on, it disappears. And then you tilt it in the right light, there it is. So essentially how I do that is I etch the logo in, and then I grind it off. And kind of polish it out. You don't want to get too aggressive or it disappears completely, but I think that's a nice little feature. I haven't seen too many guys doing that either. I kind of like it. There you go. Now you can see it pretty clearly. And I started throwing my name on some of these as well. So that's going to be my new, kind of my classy signature line logo, if you will. Uh, and this one too has the jimping that cuts into the handle. A nice nice little look there. And this was freehanded as well. So it's got the nice contouring. Very, very comfortable. Uh, carbon fiber, of course. Uh, this one says I'll go to completed knives and then I'll go do works in progress. Uh, this one's just about complete. This is the chef knife from the tutorial. This is my first time working desert ironwood. Uh, which you can see, if you get a light colored piece, it's pretty cool looking, but the dark colored stuff kind of disappears pretty 
pretty easily. So I wish I would have got a, a lighter color because I really like the look on the bottom here uh, where it really has that contrast, a nice pop to it. Uh, of course, first time working this as well. But yeah, the, yeah guys, this is, uh, this is that chef from the tutorial. You would never know that I blew the grind on purpose on this. Check that out. Nice satin finish. That's a 600 grit satin. Of course, in uh, true Mike fashion, after it was 100% complete, I put a tiny little scratch in the middle somewhere that's just staring at me. And of course I can't find it now, but it's there. Believe me, it's there, and it drives me nuts. Because the only the right way to get that out would be to take the handles off. And I don't know if I'm ready to go that far yet. Here's another chef uh, we have. Now this chef in particular was ground very, very thin. Uh, so this is going to make an excellent slicer. I, I mean, this is super thin. Uh, but thick enough where it can still hold up to some abuse. This one's a bit thicker. Uh, so it will if if you're kind of an animal in the kitchen and you like to just hack through bone and all that stuff You don't want to worry about chipping your knife uh, a Thicker might be a little better for you. I mean, I'm not talking. It's not it's not like a, a camp knife thick or anything like that But this one will take a beating No doubt about it. I don't know if it would be great for sushi, but it'll take a beating and of course we need some handles for it Also this one was also made exactly like that one and you guys if you want to know how to make these go check out my tutorial uh, I think they work out pretty good it's pretty labor intensive but the results are uh, are pretty nice I think anyway and we have one of the cleavers now I know you guys uh, look at this and of course this one's got the that same super super high gloss grind with satin flats it's got a little bit of haze on it right now because it's got an oil on it. Uh, and I know uh, some of you guys see this and they're like, uh, dude, that's not a cleaver. No way. Uh, you're right. I, I don't know why I call it the cleaver. I guess maybe because it doesn't have a pointy tip. This was actually modeled after a straight razor when I, when I designed it. I love the look of a nice classic straight razor. And I wanted to make it into some kind of knife. And uh, for you guys that like to grind thin. Now you see, looking at it from this angle, why I like that straight razor look. That super lean hollow grind. This is very, very thin. This is going to be an excellent slicer when it's complete. Uh, so yeah, that one needs handles. Uh, this one does have an issue that kind of irks me a little bit. We'll see if it'll show up. There's a little dip if you can see it right where my finger is of course it's not going to cooperate on camera you can see it maybe right there there's a tiny tiny little dip in the mirror in that super high gloss bevel uh, that there it is see it right there it drives me nuts because everything else came out super clean on it but that one just wouldn't polish out and I don't want to push my luck and polish it any further because as you guys can see as thin as it is right now I'd have to make it even thinner to get that out so this one's going to go up as is uh, once I get some handles on it I'll probably throw some some nice carbon fiber on there to go with the super high gloss bevel but uh, yeah there's a couple of more works in progress these little Tupperwares these little bins here are full of my folder prototypes which I am very very close I hope fingers crossed that I'm gonna nail this next one so that's pretty much it guys and kinda wandered out of frame there for a second but this has been my mentality lately and if you're on Instagram you've seen this already but that's what I gotta do get in here make a knife and get back to my roots of just grinding away and having a good old time. So that's it for this one, guys. This is Mike here from Ecom Knives, and I'll catch you on the next video.